So, using only the rules that we just reviewed, we're going to do a proof. So, the way we set up a proof is, right, we're given, in this case, three premises. Sometimes it could be one premise or two premise or four premise. But in this case, it's three, three premises. And then the conclusion. So the conclusion always comes after the three little funky dots. So the way we set it up is we just, right, put on line number one, R arrow tilde T, right? That's our first premise. So we just put there on line one. On line two, we put tilde B wedge T, because it's our second premise. Line three, put R, because it's our third premise. Usually people ask, do I have to put the third premise third? Can I put it first? The answer is yes. You could write these in whatever order you want. I just go from left to right. So now the goal is to get tilde B. Now, this is the actual doing proof part. So there's a couple of different strategies you can employ. You could say, okay, I want tilde B. Where is tilde B in all my premises? It's right there. How do I get tilde B? Well, it's in a wedge. What rules do I have that work with wedge? And so on and so on and so on. That's a really good strategy. Another strategy you can do, which is also a viable one, is to see a rule and apply a rule. So look for a pattern that matches and then do that rule. They're set up to where if you actually complete a rule successfully and correctly, then that's going to let you do something else and then something else and then something else. It's set up that way. So that's also a good strategy, especially when, for your, when you're first starting out or if you're having a little trouble thinking about this kind of strategically. So let's look and see, okay, based on these three lines, do I see a match with anything? Well, I have an arrow. So I think about my arrow rules, right? Modus ponens, modus tollens, HS. Okay, well, you can do even do a process elimination. Well, HS is out of the question, right? Because HS requires me to have, remember, I need at least two conditionals before I can form a third conditional. So I only have one here, so that's not going to happen. Modus tollens says I need the denial of the consequent, right? I need the tilde consequent. So in this case, I would need tilde tilde t. Let's not worry about that yet. That's going to come later on. So I would need tilde tilde t. Well, I don't have that, so I can't do modus tollens. What about modus ponens, mp? Modus ponens says that if I have the right side, or sorry, if I have the left side, I can get the right side. Do you see that match? Right? Right there. Look. The left side of the arrow is r, and there's r sitting there. So what could I write on line 4? If you said tilde t, you're right. And the way we do that, the way we show that we didn't just make that up, is by saying, okay, I used line 1, and I used line 3. Line 1 is the conditional, line 3 is the antecedent, right? It's the left side. And the rule that I used was modus ponens. So now I have a new line to work with, and that's really good news, because that lets me do some other things that I might not have previously been able to do. So let's see what I can do now that I have tilde t. Well, do we see any other matches? Right, we use that line, but that doesn't mean it's used up, right? Lines don't go away, they're not broken, we could use it again if we wanted to. Right, well, that, I can't really think of anything to do with it right now, so maybe we should try another one. Well, let's look at our other premise, right? Tilde b wedge t. Well, we do know that that line is exceptionally interesting because it has tilde b in it, right? And what rule do I have right now that works with wedges? Right, ds. So what do I need to do to get tilde b by itself? Well, remember ds says, right, if you have a disjunction and you have the denial of one of those sides, then you can get the other side, right? If you know the answer to the test is A or the answer to the test is B, and you know the not A, right, so you conclude B. The hard part about this is not the rules themselves, it's seeing the rules in all the other gibberish. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but if you look, right, tilde B, wedge T, tilde T, there's that pattern right there, tilde T, T. That lets us take tilde B, put it there on line 5. So, I did that, right, with 2 and 4, ds, right? Line 2 was the disjunction, line 4 was the opposite of one of those sides. And we're finished this proof because we got to the conclusion, right? The conclusion's tilde b, there's tilde b, we're done. That's all proofs are. This is actually a pretty good comparison of what might be 
the easiest problem on the test, right? Maybe a little harder, but this is pretty much on track. So let's do some more problems. So I already set this one up, right? I wrote all the premises down, so our goal is to get D. So how can we get D? Well, again, we can work through this backwards. We can use that strategy. Okay, there's D. How would I get D out of that line? What rule allows me to break up a wedge? Right, DS, and what do I need to do? And you can work it like that. Or we could think, okay, what patterns do I have right now? What rule can I apply right now? Looking at this pattern, I say, okay, well, I have an arrow. What rules work with arrows? And you can go through that list. What rules work with wedges? We only have one right now, DS. Well, I don't have tilde D, and I don't have tilde M, so I really can't do anything with this. Well, I do have an arrow. Maybe I have a pattern here. Can you see what pattern this presents? If you said modus tollens, you're right. right. I have an arrow, and I have tilde the consequent. So just like before, right? when I have tilde the consequent, I write down the tilde of the antecedent, or the tilde of the left side. So on line 4, I can write tilde m, because I have that pattern. So that's line 1 and 3, mt, modus tollens. In line 5, what can I do now? Maybe now that I have tilde m, what can I do? Well, again, looking for that pattern, I maybe look, oh, look right here. D wedge m, tilde m. So the answer to the test is dogs, or the answer to the test is mammals. Well, the answer to the test is not mammals. So that leaves us only with dogs. And line 2 is the disjunction. Line 4 was the denial of one of the consequences. In this, er, sorry, the denial of one of the disjuncts, said properly. And that rule was DS. And we know we're done because we got the conclusion, so we stop. Right? Let's try one more. This one's a little bit different because there's actually multiple ways of solving it. So I'll do one and then I'll do the next. So, looking at this, I say, okay, what can I do? I've got a lot of arrows here. Well, Right away, I see a match for modus ponens, right? A, arrow, B, right? So if you eat an apple, then you eat a banana. Well, it turns out you ate an apple. So if you have the left side of the arrow, you can get the right side. There's the left side right there. So I'm going to write down B on line four. One, three, modus ponens. Okay, well, now that I have B, what can I do? Well, looking at that, I see, hey, look at that. I have B, now I see another match for modus ponens, right? If you, if you eat a banana, then you'll eat a coconut? Well, look there, I ate a banana. So you can infer that I ate a coconut. Two is the arrow line, and four was the confirmation of the antecedent, right? The left side by itself, modus ponens. See, I'm done because I have C all by itself. And so that way I can stop. Now. There's not just one correct way of doing a proof. Look, there's another way to do it with a different rule. Instead of this, right, maybe some of you saw a match in a different way. I have that match right there. Remember that? HS. If A, then B, and B, and C, well, then that means I can make a new conditional. If A, arrow, C. 1, 2, H, S. Right? Now that I've got that going on, Maybe what can I do? Oh, five. Now I have another match for MP. I can get C from three, four, MP. There's not just one correct way of doing proofs. Now this might be a little fast, a little bit confusing. Go back, watch this again. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. But watching these a couple of times, practicing along the web tutor, and then watching the other videos, those are all good bets, but there's no substitute for practice. So Watch the next video and then get on 8.1 Web Tutor, uh, specifically 8.1C, I think is your best bet.